Service Games was first founded in 1945 by Irving Bromberg, his son Martin, and his son's friend James Humpert. Irving had been running an amusement machine company since the 30s, and had a direct hand in distributing some of the most influential early pinball machines. By 1940, his son was selling games for his father to the military facilities in Hawaii as standard games. It's entirely likely that they were the sole distributor and had control of the entire market. In 1945, Standard Games was sold in the three incorporated service games to sell slot machines and other coin ops to the U.S. military facilities on the island, which, at this point, was an incorporated territory and would not get statehood for another decade and a half. Humpert joined the father and son team as PR man, finding new locations for games and keeping location owners happy. Then, in 1951, Congress passed the Johnson Act, making it illegal to transport gambling machines across state lines except to states where gambling was legal. The Army decided to ban gambling machines from its bases in the continental U.S. and territories, but left it up to each base commander in foreign countries. Basically, they felt that it was good for morale, and having the machines in the PX and officers' clubs kept rowdy servicemen out of the local bars. The rules, though, were strict. They had to come from American manufacturers, and they had to have high payout rates, and the club owners had to own the machine outright, not lease them. This did not, however, make them illegal in military bases on foreign soil. So, in 1952, Service Games opens a distribution office in Japan to sell amusement machines to U.S. military bases throughout East Asia. This is uh, basically two guys, salesman Richard Stewart and mechanic Raymond Lemaire. They form a partnership doing business as Service Game Japan, an independent division of Service Games Limited. In 1954, Service Games applies for a trademark shortening the first letters of each part of the name to the simpler SEGA. So, by 1958, Service Games is jointly owned by Stuart, Lemaire, and the Brombergs. The IRS began to investigate them, something that soon became a matter of public controversy and political interest. Over 100 violations were claimed, including bribery, illegal use of military and sea transport, illegal imports, customs violations, fraud and forged documents, kickbacks, collusions and biddings, and circumvention of the Buy American program, in addition to illegal gratuities, coercion, and intimidation. Machines imported for use in military bases were exempt from duty fees, and Service Games was accused of diverting games bought for those places and selling them elsewhere on the Japanese market. They were also accused of manufacturing the machines outside the U.S., then sending them to Nevada for the final assembly in order to qualify for the Buy American program while benefiting from cheaper labor. They were also accused of skimming profits from the officers' clubs that owned the machines. Alleged offenses by individuals associated with service games included theft, assault, intimidation, coercion, bribery, rape, and assault with a deadly weapon. In 1959, the Army and Navy blacklisted service games and banned its personnel from military bases in Japan. Service Games Japan is dissolved in 1960, and two new companies are incorporated— Nihon Goraku Busan Kabushiki Kaisha, which translates to Japanese Automatic Manufacturers Company Incorporated, or sometimes called Nippon Goraku Busan, and Nippon Kikai Saizo KK, or the Japanese Machine Manufacturers Company. So, Nippon Goraku Busan is a coin op distributor, and Nippon Kikai Saizo KK manufactures slot machines and does business as Sega Incorporated. They purchase the assets of the old Service Games Japan. But despite the changes, the Navy bans Goraku Busan as well. So, in 1961, the Brombergs sell Service Games Hawaii and reserve the use of the name Service Games for their foreign operations. In 1964, Nippon Goraku Busan acquires Nippon Kikai Saizo, and in 1965, they merge with Rosen Enterprises to finally form Sega Enterprises. Now, Rosen... Rosen Enterprises had been founded in 1954 when Korean War vet David Rosen returned to Japan to set up an import-export firm. Seeing the need for the occupied Japanese people to have identification photos for rationing, travel, and employment, he set up a two-minute photo booth operation called Photorama. He soon had over 100 locations throughout Japan. Now, Western instant photomats were fully automated, but the photos didn't last long enough for official use because they didn't use development chemicals requiring careful monitoring. 
So Rosen hired locals to work inside his photoramas monitoring the temperatures so their two-minute photos would last almost five years. However, as copycats moved into the industry, photo booths became less lucrative. And by the 60s, Rosen began to replace them with American coin-op amusement machines that had, until then, been located primarily on military bases. The Ministry of Trade limited him to importing $100,000 worth of games per year, so he focused on older, cheaper games at first. Hunting games were very popular, firearms being illegal, but uh, while his competition focused on treat locations, Rosen focused on arcades, opening a chain of 200 within a few years. So, after the merger, David Rosen becomes president and CEO of Sega. At first, they want to import new games, but they quickly discover that this offers no real benefit over the older ones that he'd been offered uh, offering as Rosen Enterprises. There was, at this time, in the mid-60s, very little innovation in the stagnant amusement industry. Sega will instead make new games. The first game to bear the Sega name predates the company. In 1962, Service Games released Punching Bag, a strength tester branded as Sega. It's exactly what it sounds like. They also released Space Aced, a space-themed gun game. In 1965, the first Sega-branded game as Sega was a crane game called Skill Digger. 1966 saw a ping pong basketball game under a plastic dome, Basketball, which was the first Sega game imported back into the U.S. by Midway. 1966 Periscope was Sega's true breakout game, however, such a hit that both U.S. and European Im- companies began to import it. It was huge by arcade standards, 10 foot by 6 by 6, and so expensive that arcade owners in the U.S. charged 25 cents per play instead of the customary 10, setting the new standard. After its success, Sega becomes an exporter of games, at their height designing 10 new arcade titles per year. They continue manufacturing electromechanical games for an entire decade, long after they've started making video arcade games. And that, my viewers, is the history of Sega.